Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host co and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, we talk a lot on this program about the future of work, the future of jobs, what Gen Z has in store for it, um, and today we're going to have a real life Gen Zer on the show. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I think again, understanding how Alteryx is really helping out within the classroom and helping bring that next gen group up who's going to have the actual capabilities when they get to the workforce is huge. And know a lot more than we do. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would like to welcome to the show Jason Beland. He is the Vice President of the Global Sparked Education Program at Alteryx. Welcome, Jason. Thanks so much for having us here. And Matthew Dortson, he is the data science, he is a data science student at Camden Community College. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you. So I want to start with you, Jason, and have you tell our viewers a little bit about the Sparked Education Program, what sparked it, and, <laughs> and, and what it's all about. Yeah, listen, uh, first, thanks again for having us here. You know, everything we do at Alteryx really has community at the center of it, and when you talk to any of the thousands of people here in our community, you sort of hear two things. One is, you hear about the transformative power of analytics and having analytic skills in the workforce uh, to be able to really change your career, to change your team, to change your company. But the other thing you hear is that customers are really struggling to hire folks with analytic skills. And so the Spart Education Program really is at the center of solving that, connecting learners with customers. Today we're working with over 1,200 universities across 55 countries. We've worked with almost 200,000 learners like Matthew to help individuals upskill on analytics as well as Alteryx technology so they're ready on day one uh, for their next career opportunity. And what, and what really was the impetus for this program in terms of whose brainchild it was? And well, I'm very fortunate. I, I had a great opportunity when I joined Alteryx to work with the Alteryx co-founder, Libby Dwayne Adams, and this was really her brainchild in really believing that, you know, analytics changed her lives as it changed many, many of our lives, and she really believed that in the power of making sure we democratize access to analytics, whether that's on Alteryx or any other technology, really making sure everyone, no matter what your role is, no matter what your background is, you have access to understanding data and analytics, not just to solve the problem in front of you, but to really question and understand data and participate in the, in the future of work. Yeah, and as somebody who got a minor in stat and algorithms and stuff like that, and I actually started out doing a lot of data analysis for marketing, marketing organizations and things of that nature, having to understand how you use what you're learning in say a math class or a stat prob class or what have you and how you apply that is huge. What, what does all tricks in the classroom really look like? So a lot of it is, pre not pressure, but hands-on application of the software and also definitely professors pushing you to try out new things, ask the right questions, use the community if you don't have the answers. And on top of that, making sure that everybody knows how the tool works, how to use the different examples or the support that Alteryx provides, and whether or not you're confused on something or you need to be able to ask the right questions and know that the community is there to help. They're always willing to answer. You can ask anything and within 10 minutes you're going to get an answer. Yeah, I, I guess that, that's an interesting question. How do you interact with the community? Is it through the portal? Is it through Slack? Is it, how, how are people? So Alteryx has, I think it's called the Mavericks community. It's, yeah. it's right there. As soon as you sign up for Alteryx, you get an account with it and you're able to use it almost immediately. Aces and experts are on there all the time. You can ask a question about any random issue that you're having with a, a workflow and you're bound to get an answer within a half hour. Like, I, at fir the first time I was ever using it, my professor said, ask a question. And I was kind of unsure and a little bit hesitant. And then I asked the question and somebody gave me a really in-depth answer within a few minutes. And I was honestly in awe. I was like, wow, yeah. this is incredible. It, it, it is the community that you were talking about. So speaking of that, Jason, what are you hearing from people right now in terms of, I mean, you, you said that there, there is, there's a dearth of, of data scientists people who know this stuff and, and can work with this stuff on the job. What are you hearing in terms of the most in-demand skills and, and really where the gaps are? Well, you know, interestingly, we just had a conversation yesterday with 70 plus educators from about 40 institutions uh, right here in Las Vegas talking about this. 
In addition to the things you expect to, to be in demand in terms of data analytics skills, I think interestingly there's sort of the softer skills that are that are emerging as really important. So myself, uh, with an English uh, liberal arts background, English major. Um, <laughs> oh, you as well. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Um, listen, I think it's really important that uh, individuals can show up and not again not just get to the answer, but know how to communicate that answer to uh, uh, their colleagues uh, up up the ladder to make sure we can get everyone on board with whatever it is that we need to do. So thinking about it, from a higher ed standpoint, how can we not just teach the skills, but also all of those skills around those core skills to, so individuals have a comprehensive sort of toolkit to work with. I'm really excited about some of the features Altrix talked about earlier today in terms of magic documents and things that really I think help accelerate some of the storytelling around data that can kind of unlock it from one place and make sure everyone can understand what we're really talking about. And I would say the other thing that we're really seeing is data analytics is no longer just about finance and accounting and you know, supply chain. It really is, if you want to be a journalist in 2024, you better know something about data, right? And so every major across every discipline is really feeling this need now to make sure data analytics is a piece of, of every conversation. Exactly, I mean, and really it, it goes back to the human element yeah. too. So it's the soft skills, it's the storytelling, which, yeah. is, which, is, which is human and, and, and getting the empathy and understanding how to convey a motion and, and make something, make people feel desire or interest even. Exactly. Yeah, so um, I'm curious how you experience the program in, in, terms of, in terms of what it's teaching you and in terms of the kinds of certifications that, that you're going for. So a uh, lot of what I'm learning is data science in general, but my professor had pushed us to participate in the datathons, make sure that we're active, because not only are you just practicing workflows, but you're practicing presenting, you're practicing those soft skills, you're making sure that you can be, be in front of employers and, and show context around data that otherwise would just be a bunch of numbers on a screen. Another thing is where she's pushing us to actually get certified on the Altrix uh, system software. So I, I am course certified and if, if it wasn't for my professor, I probably wouldn't be. And that certification is definitely something where you can go to an employer and you can say, listen, I know what I'm doing, I've had experience with this. Even if I might not be an ace or an expert, I'm on track to head down that path. I, it, I've worked with this and I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and you're even here looking for internships, which <laughs> I think is fantastic and I think it's a way that you know, I thought to your point earlier, it's some of the discussions in the keynotes about the use cases and how you actually use the product in different for marketing, finance, you know, DoorDash talking about you know locations and understanding how it's it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how you're being taught, is is that kind of the use cases they're taking you by the professors are taking you through in a use case manner? A lot of times, so Sometimes like when they're more introductory, the professor will t take a more simple data set, something so that we can just practice the actual workflow. But a lot of times they'll actually let you pick it. So that way you're interested in it, you're passionate about it. It's real world data. It's something that can actually provide actionable insight. It's not just a bunch of numbers about diamonds or something like that. It's something, for example, I for the Datathon, I worked on New York City syringe summary. So it was about the cleanup in New York City and public parks of hypodermic needles, which I think is kind of important. It's a yeah. big thing. It's, it's not just a random data set that nobody cares about. It's actual data. It's a little bit dirty. You got to work with it. You got to get in there and find out the context and create a presentation out of it and really hone your skills and, and understand what you're doing with the data, not just following a bunch of, of formulas and saying, okay, I did it. Yeah. Jason, a question for you. I know We know that schools are not graduating enough data scientists, but we also know that organizations are struggling with this issue in terms of upskilling and reskilling their current employees. Are there any learnings that have come out of the Sparked Education program that you can then apply to enterprises too in terms of, of how, to, how to teach people this stuff? Well, I think, you know, when I, uh, Matthew just mentioned the, one of the datathons that, that he attended where we looked at homelessness data and using open, open data sets. Um, we've definitely seen opportunities to engage more people across institutions of learning, but also across organizations when we uh, show up with use cases that are more approachable, that folks can really see themselves working on, uh, and maybe folks who 
are the, the English majors like <laughs> you and me who maybe freeze up when we see a spreadsheet, but we say, you know what, I, I do care about homelessness, I do care about healthcare issues, I care about these other things. I start getting in and say, and suddenly, wait a minute, I actually do know a thing or two about working with data when I, when I care about it and when I apply myself. So we've seen that with, with open data, public data sets, as well as, you know, McLaren is here. Uh, sports data is another great way to activate individuals who may not think of themselves as data scientists, but you give people something they're passionate about and uh, that ignites them in a different way. Because Sparks back to the them, purpose. sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I think F1 is definitely gets def, definitely piques people's interest to, yeah. to put it mildly. And there's so much data from yeah. not only just the race tactics to the actual telemetry of the cars, and I mean those cars are, are basically you know walking data sets to put, <laughs> yeah. it, to put it mildly. Yeah. How, Matthew, how how do you look at this and you? Where do you want to be, like in the next four Ooh. years here? I mean, you got you know another two years to go, but you know, hey. Where do you want, what are you I mean, excited it's, it's about? I mean, it's honestly, it's crazy you say that because about a year ago I was still debating going back to college. So yeah. from right now, I'm not 100% sure. I'm thinking maybe consultancy, that way I can dip my toe in a little bit of everything, try it out. But to, to your point earlier, there's so many industries that you, you can work in. I was meeting people earlier today. There's somebody from an airline. There's somebody from uh, Johnson & Johnson. There's somebody from defense industry. Like there's all types of people. If you want to work somewhere, you can do it. All you have to do is meet the right people, have the right skills, and put yourself out there. Yeah, it's definitely a hot area, trust oh, me. Yeah. We, we, we talk about this all the time, and I can tell you this is the, the hottest area, is understanding and doing this. What, one of the things I'm curious about is, uh, like, so Aiden, the whole Aiden, you know, AI and things, how are, how are they introducing that in, you know, not necessarily just Aiden, but AI in general yeah. into so your studies? Yeah, so fortunately my professor, um, she was able to get a little bit hands-on experience with the AI. She was one of the educators who was given an early access code. So we were kind of playing around with that tool while they were still making it. Oh. <laughs> it was really cool to see. Every day we would come in, we'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't really know how this works. And you come in the next day and suddenly there's new tools and new configurations to stuff. But it's really interesting. It's really crazy to see how much power there really is in the tool. And I, I, I was at a summit earlier today, or yesterday, where they were talking about the transition from desktop designer to the cloud. And it really is important that people understand, it's, it, yes, there are the AI tools and the, the, all that sentiment analysis and generative AI, but like, the biggest thing is being able to take a company who's stuck on premises and being able to move them to that scalability of the on the cloud. So, the AI tools that Altrix has been putting out are really powerful and really incredible. I love to just sit there and play with them sometimes. You, you better watch out, they're going to hire you as a sales engineer for that too. That was a great pitch for cloud, to, to put it mildly. I think you, you did You're it. Hired. Well, yeah, I was going to say, that was, um, but I, I think that was a great job. But I think, again, we were talking about this in the keynote analysis, is that thread of what yeah. you can do on-prem versus in the cloud, the scalability. I, I think you summed it up very well. Thank you. So. So even though you should absolutely hire Matthew, you're not going <laughs> to hire all of the Sparked graduates, but, but, it, but it is a pipeline for Alteryx too, importantly. Absolutely. Um, but, but, it, but it's, can you talk a little bit about, about that, that pipeline, and, but, but also how even if they don't end up working for Alteryx, <laughs> it, it, it could be a good thing. Well, look, I'm, we're excited to connect uh, all of our learners with our you know, 8,000 plus global customers. We've actually launched two exciting new platforms to help folks do that. One on, on LinkedIn to bring in Altrix customers with core certified learners like Matthew so they can connect with each other. And the other thing, a little bit kind of uh, further uh, in, in a different spot than, than hiring for a job is mentorship. So many of the individuals in this room are looking for ways to give back, to mentor. So we have a new platform called Mentor Connect. Any customer who's here with us can sign up for that, they can connect with students, they can talk tech if they want to, they can also talk interviewing skills, you know, looking for jobs, different kinds of careers, so um, we're seeing a lot of interest in that, both on the job side and the mentorship side, both of which are really important to us. Excellent. Yeah. Oh. Matthew, I just, I want to talk about Gen Z here, because, because you are the it generation right now, you are, some of you, you're sort of the oldest Gen Zers, are, I think are 26, 27, maybe into their second jobs now. Um, and there's so much talk about how Gen Z is really revolutionizing and changing the workplace as we know it in terms of what they care about, wanting more purpose, um, caring more about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, it, they're being more mindful about things like burnout. Yeah. How do you, and I don't want you to be, you're not the spokesperson for your generation, <laughs> I don't expect you to be, but how do you think about work and your future, which is just unfolding before you right mm. now? Well, I mean, uh, a big factor of that is definitely 
w wanting to work in something that you are passionate about and that you care about because then you can see yourself doing it for a long time. You want to make sure that you care about what you do and that the work you do makes you feel like you're actually helping. You're not just pushing paper for somebody or punching in a bunch of numbers, but you're actually invested in what you're doing and, you're, and you care about it. Obviously, there's that life-work balance. There's making sure you still have your family, making sure everybody's still healthy and happy. But beyond that, definitely moving yourself forward and enhancing your own personal skills and abilities and helping the people around you. Yeah, so I, I think again, looking at the whole program and, and it just, it's, it's impressive. I, I think also that giving back aspect of it, it it's, but it must take just a momentous amount of effort, not only on your part, but on the team's part to do this. Do you also get people that are outside of your group, like people who are in the sales who want to help out and be, you know, they're, they happen to be visiting a customer or something like that yeah. and give back or this is a this program is fantastic for our, our army of AEs out in the world and solution engineers and everybody really to have a conversation with customers about you know how we can provide value well beyond the software we can help them with strategic hiring problems that they're having uh, with the pipeline of folks like Matthew that that we're, that we're working with outside of that we've got an amazing partner community who's also looking to hire and they want to partner with us as well on running datathons you know engaging students in their local community, so it's pretty awesome in that way, and I, I will say we've now kind of extended the program, and we'll, we'll be doing more of this in the coming year with partners like Data Camp, for example, other online training uh, providers. Uh, we actually just spun up a, with Data Camp, spun up a course, uh, now that's available to all of their learners uh, on, on their platform as well, that prepares them for uh, getting course certified. Well, Jason and Matthew, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really great thank conversation. You. I'm inspired by the next generation. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology news, enterprise, and analysis.